Hi everyone. Today we are going to cover the topic called capital budgeting or investment decisions. Before we move on to capital budgeting or investment decisions, let's try to understand an overview of CMA program as a whole. I mean the topic part of CMA. When you look at CMA overall part, you have two parts. One is part one, other is part two. And the topics under part one, you have first is external reporting, external financial reporting. Then you have budgeting. Then you have costing, basics of costing. Then you have standard costing or performance management. And finally, you have internal control. Similarly, when it comes to part two, you have six topics instead of five here. Part two, you have financial statement analysis. Then you have corporate finance. You have decision analysis, which is also called as marginal costing. Some areas of risk, you know, the portfolio management topics are covered under risk. Then you have investment decisions or capital budgeting. And finally, you have professional ethics. So these are the topics I could say at a nutshell, at a very macro level for part one and part two under CME. And what we are going to focus now is under part two, you have investment decisions. We will be taking that investment decisions and moving further. Okay. Investment decision roughly have around 15 to 20 percent weightage in CMA exam. Investment decisions also known as capital budgeting. Okay. Why investment decision is also known as capital budgeting? See, whenever you let's take a very simple example. We keep saying we are going to invest on a property. We are going to invest on a land. You know, so those situations at that moment, you need fund, which is not something where you immediately arrange and settle. It is some fund which is substantial in nature, which requires a long term decision. I mean, I would say time required to take that decision. The impact of that decision may be for a long term. So that is why you may have to think from a capital perspective with respect to the amount of investment time etc required so whenever you have those kind of scenarios coming in we call by the term capital budgeting i will come more in detail because capital is always under constraint and at that point you need something called budgeting exercise so that is why investment decisions when we are saying we relate that with the term capital budgeting i hope that point is clear yes now what we will do is the topic of capital budgeting we will subdivide into three segments the first part is basic part of discussion then you have different methods which includes under methods you have net present value method internal rate of return payback period profitability index accounting rate of return like that different methods and then finally few miscellaneous areas so i could say the entire capital budgeting into three segments basics methods and miscellaneous areas now what we will do is we'll start with basics we'll start with the basic part of discussion please remember the flow part two investment decisions which is also cap known as capital budgeting under capital budgeting three segments basic methods and miscellaneous areas now we are going to go further to the next level which is the basic part so when we say about basic we are going to discuss about capital budgeting it is important to understand what is capital see in economic terms people call capital as anything which you know add you know a substantial economic value to what you are going to do which we call it as capital in economic terms whenever in finance capital being referred it's generally raised with respect to raising of fund you know you need to enhance your uh, uh, you know potential business or to start up a business the funds required or to kick off a new business you know all these terms are related with or, or could be used along with the term capital so in layman's language we could say that capital is something to maybe to kick off a business or to ensure that the 
small flow of business happens when as and when any additional requirement it can be in the form of cash or by means i hope that point is clear capital now the next years capital again could be classified into two segments so let me try to give an example on that let's take a restaurant business okay we are going to start a restaurant now when we look at from a restaurant perspective if we want to start what are the requirements we could classify into two parts okay one is i may be requiring a building we may be requiring a land we may be requiring the furniture equipments high end equipments may be required which we can put it on the right side on the left side we could see you know the area groceries maybe to cook the food i need groceries may i maybe i need staff to you know run that uh, uh, or, or uh, uh, to make that cooking happen so you know so i need people for that then maybe i may be requiring some vegetables i may be requiring all miscellaneous items to ensure that smooth functioning of the restaurant which we can park it as on the left side now when we look at the right side land building equipment all high end cost a high end related area second on the other side you have you know groceries miscellaneous items staff etc when we compare the first side when we say what is the difference between these two right hand side and left hand side if you look at the right hand side items you could see land or building it is a decision which we make the impact of it will be for a longer duration it will be for a longer duration i'm going to invest in a building it is not for a single day it may be for our next 10 years 15 years we are going to invest on a land next 15 years we are going to buy some equipments not immediately it will be continuously used on the other side if you look at here what are the items we look at groceries groceries maybe for tomorrow day after not for very long so look at staff i hire a staff i hire a staff the if the efficiency of the staff is not good enough i may think okay you know we need to think that okay that is fine we can uh, move move him out so as a result if you look at make a comparison one is which is relating to long term which is for a longer duration the other one is relating to a shorter duration so the first one we call it as long term capital and the second part we call it as short term capital short term capital or also known as working capital this part the working capital part we will park for now and we will be covering when we take up corporate finance under part 2 section b corporate finance at that moment we will be covering this short term finance now our focus will be as we discuss which will be on the long term finance again coming back to the starting point when we say investment decision whatever we are investing it is not for today tomorrow it is for a longer duration so that is why we said investment decisions capital budgeting and now we are saying that under capital budgeting long term capital i hope that point is clear so let me summarize up to now we started with part 2 investment decisions under investment decisions we said also known as capital budgeting three segments basics then you have methods and then miscellaneous areas under basics when we said the first part was capital and we are subdividing that capital into two category long term and short term and our focus now would be on the long term capital or capital budgeting now the next point we said we are clear we are moving ahead with long term capital what is its significance why long term capital why we need to think about long term capital what is its significance it is very simple if you take a long term capital decision the impact of it is for a longer duration let's take a simple example we are going to purchase a flat if we go and purchase let's say 1 million invested on a particular flat and we take a decision okay we are moving ahead and doing the registration once we do that it is irreversible for a longer duration <coughs> you cannot reverse that decision once you take it it is for a longer duration that exactly 
is the significance of long term. It, it is irreversible. Once you take a decision, you cannot reverse. To give you some example, in early 2000, 2000 to 2006 scenario, there was a high boom in India particularly on ERP implementation. As you know, ERP implementation involved multiple stages. You know, starting up, you have to have a due diligence, you have then your implementation phase, testing phase, then your maintenance phase. It's, it's as good as a long-term investment. So when you look at from that long-term investment perspective, many companies who are doing well, doing really good, has taken a decision to move ahead to ERP decision without properly evaluating the impact of it. Investment decision or capital budgeting ultimately resulted in the companies itself getting shutting down. You know, companies were doing well, but a wrong decision in long-term capital investment resulted in companies shutting down. So as a result of which, it is most important that any decisions on capital budgeting or long-term investment has to be well thought, has to be detailed, analyzed before we taking move, moving ahead with that. To summarize, we can say that any decisions taken on long-term capital budgeting is irreversible. So we have to be very cautious about it. Now the next point is capital budgeting we were discussing about capital now capital budgeting what is capital budgeting why it is required so if you look at assume we have you know there is there is something which is never ending is our requirements our needs so when you look at from that point of view unlimited requirements if we, if you look at from a company's point of view there are n number of projects in pipeline if you are looking at personal individual capacity, there may be unlimited needs for him. So always there is no shortage for that. At the same time, the fund required or the capital is always in scarce. So as a result, what happened? If you need, if you have 10 requirements, but the fund is available only to meet five requirements, we need to have something called capital budgeting. You need to budget your capital so that out of 10, you may be able to meet five requirements because capital is always scarce. You cannot allocate the entire fund to meet your entire needs available because it is available in scarce. So that is where the exercise of capital budgeting coming into picture. You are allocating the budget, allocating the capital to different projects. I hope that point is clear. Now the next is when we look at how we move forward to the next topic. As I said, the capital, we classify or the capital budgeting three topics. The basic, what we covered now is a basic part of discussion. Under that, we discuss what is capital, capital budgeting, you know, all these things. Now, second is the methods. So before we move on to the methods, there need to be a bridge. Okay. Why it is required? Why we need methods? What is its significance? Why we need different methods in capital budget? So it is related to our earlier point. When you have long-term decision which has a risk involved in it, you need to take correct decisions to ensure that things go smooth. So if you need to do that, it is important that you do appropriate methods with which you evaluate a proposal even before you start the project. So that is why you have capital budgeting methods coming into picture. There are different methods available. So to name, to name those, under methods, we are going to the second part of it. Now, basics, methods. To name those methods, one is net present value method. The most important method used to buy corporates to evaluate capital budgeting methods, capital budgeting decisions. Second is you have payback period, internal rate of return, then you have profitability index, accounting rate of return, like that there are different methods available for you are uh, for decisions under capital budgeting. Now, our focus initially will be on net present value method. <coughs> so even before we move into the concept of present value, it is important to understand an overview or outline of this particular method. So net present value method. So in case of net present value method, 
we will try to you know uh, illustrate with an example where, where we will be able to give more clarity on that we will go back to our previous example of restaurant what happens in that case you are going to start a restaurant business today you may be running this restaurant business for the next 40 years so at this moment somebody approaches you yes start going to start the restaurant business for next 40 years whether it is feasible or not so we were saying the example of restaurant business for net present value method wherein a person approaches us today he is going to invest on this hotel business restaurant business and it is going to run for next 40 years so as finance professional we need to take a decision whether it is feasible to run this business and we don't have a choice it's for the next 40 years we have to take the decision now and say whether it is acceptable or not that is a question so under net person value method here comes two golden rules associated with this example one is you need to take into account the entire life cycle of the project so when you evaluate from today which is called as the zero year where you are going to make the investment till 40th year at the end of 40th year you may be disposing selling of that project till that 40th year whatever going to happen you will be taking that into account the entire 40 year cycle you are going to take into account that is first point now second is here we are going to discuss about cash flows we will be discussing only about cash flows to be precise expected future cash flows so under net person value method two golden rules one is take into account the entire life cycle of the project from today starting the business then you are recurring revenues and expenses each on year on year and at the end of 40th year what you are going to dispose of it all these things we will be taking into account when we do net person value method second is whenever we evaluate we will be taking into account only the cash flow part of it non cash flow expenses are not considered in this so these are two golden rules under under net person value method so let's let's try to evaluate the flow we said investment decisions or capital budgeting under capital budgeting basics methods and miscellaneous areas under basics we covered what is capital capital budgeting significance all things we covered then we moved on to methods under method we said net present value which is the first method and under net present value method now we are indicating that okay under net present value two golden rules to remember one we take into account the entire life cycle second we are going to discuss about cash flows only non cash flows are not considered right now we will be going further deep into it you know one by one we will be taking it so when we say entire life cycle what we do here is we will at next level we will be further subdividing this entire life cycle into multiple segments so the first part the entire cycle we entire life cycle will classify into four segments to be precise so the first part is called as zero year what is zero year today today i am going to invest we are going to invest on that restaurant business cash is going to go out of my hand for today's investment which is called as zero year then the next part is there is something called depreciation tax savings i'll be elaborating that more as we progress but remember that it is not depreciation we are discussing about the tax savings which arose on account of my depreciation so i invest on a building which may be depreciated over a period of five years out of the total project life so this five years as a result of depreciation is in place i may be getting some tax savings that is the part we are discussing now <coughs> now third part you have recurring cash flows year on year you have recurring cash flows coming in so year one you may have some cash inflow coming in from your you know restaurant business you are selling something you may be getting cash you may be having some expense you have to pay off your staff expenses groceries all these expenses you may have some cash outflow so the net of it from year one to year 40 whatever cash inflows and cash outflow are going to come that we classify as phase three then we have the last phase 
which is called as a sale value. What is sale value? At the end of project life, after 40th year, we may be thinking of disposing of that restaurant business. I'm going to sell off that restaurant business. So I may be getting some cash flow. So that cash flows also take into account. I hope you are get, able to get an overview of it. So we are saying about the entire life cycle. Somebody approached us to evaluate a restaurant business. We said the entire life cycle need to be evaluated. And the entire life cycle we classified into four segments. One is zero year, which is nothing but today's investment. Then you have depreciation, tax savings. You know, the tax savings are always on account of depreciation, which we I'll elaborate as I mentioned. So that is second part. Third is your recurring cash flows, year one to year 40. Whatever cash inflow, cash outflow coming in, that is uh, called as recurring cash flow. And the final one is sale value, which is nothing but at the end of project's life, we are disposing it off. So we are trying to, you know, uh, you know, take into account all possibilities which is coming in to take care of the entire life cycle. From today till 40th year, it gets sell off. The entire life cycle is taken care under net present value method. Now, the next step is we are going further deep into each of the segment. So look at the flow, investment decisions, basic methods and uh, uh, miscellaneous areas, basic over methods, net present value method, under net present value method, two rules. One is entire life cycle, then you have uh, expected cash flow only to be considered, two golden rules. Under entire life cycle, we further break down it into four segments, zero year, depreciation tax savings, recurring cash flows and sale value. It's also remember the term EZDRS, EZDRS, which is most important four terms, four letters you need to remember throughout capital budgeting. Whenever we, as we progress, whenever we going to discuss any questions, the first thing we write on the right hand corner would be EZDRS, which stands for EZ, zero year, depreciation tax savings, D, recurring, R stands for recurring cash flows, and S stands for sale value. So we'll be discussing about EZDRS as we progress, which is, you need to remember that point. Now, as we discuss one more step deeper into it, first one is zero year. So when we discuss about zero year, the zero year is nothing but today at this moment when I start business it becomes first year but today when I make investment it is called as zero year. So under zero year there may be multiple scenarios may be coming into picture. There may be multiple scenario. Let us evaluate one by one. So the first scenario is the person who approached us to start the restaurant business said he want to invest in restaurant business. It may be a straight case. He is going with maybe 10 million euros, 10 million dollars. He go purchase some property and that's it. You know, it is an initial investment or zero year investment happens. There is nothing else exists there. You are investing. That's it. It gets over. Now, the second scenario, this person assume that this particular person who is going to invest in that property or the building of that hotel has some old building available. So remember, this is important, again, we are looking from a project specific, you know, we are looking only from a project specific. So this project, for this project, this person is going to invest in this hotel, maybe purchase, let's to make it simple, he is going to make a purchase of a land or a purchase of a building. So when he is going to sell uh, purchases, he has some ancestral property available which can be disposed of against this project. So assume that he gets you know, a situation wherein uh, he has a situation, let's say he has to invest 5 crores in this particular property. Against that, he gets 3 crores from his old asset, you know, the old asset, old building. So effectively what becomes his net, net investment? It becomes 5 minus 3, 2 becomes his net investment. So first scenario was he is going, let's say 5 crore he going and investing, which is a first scenario, which becomes a situation wherein uh, he has only investment on the building. Second scenario is he is going to invest 5 crores, again has, he has 3 crores uh, old asset sale happens, which becomes 5 minus 3, 2 becomes net investment. Now let's go to the third scenario. Wherein, 
you have sale you have to go and invest in asset there is a sale value of old asset you know the ancestral property also you are going to sell so the investment you need to make is 5 crores you have a situation you have ancestral property which has 3 crores value ideally would should have been net value would have net investment would have been 2 crores but what happens here is government imposes taxes whenever you sell a property and if you derive capital gain out of it then you will be liable to tax so as a result of it, what happened when whenever there is tax happen there is a cash outflow comes into picture so under this scenario we need to take into account the capital gain or capital loss i will come to the capital loss later now let's elaborate on situation scenario 3 where initial investment 5 crores sale of old asset 3 crores now when we say sale of all old asset 3 crores this sale of old asset against that assume that it has a net book value of 2 crores so what we are saying sale value is 5 crores uh, sorry initial investment is 5 crores you have sale value of 3 crores of old asset against that there is a book value of 2 so how you get derive capital gain you have a sale value minus net book value you derive at your capital gain or capital loss so 3 crores minus 2 crores you derive capital gain of 1 crore in this case so again net initial against net initial investment of 5 crores when i sell this asset which is of 3 crores i have to pay capital gain of 1 crore so here we are discussing about sale value of old asset again only then we will come to the Uh, net initial investment part so sale value of old asset 3 crores i am getting against that there is a capital gain of 1 crore derived now this 1 crore we need to identify tax assume for a moment our tax is 40% so 1 crore into 40% it become 0.4 crores becomes our tax portion now what we do against when the sale happens i get 3 crores from the sale value against that there is some tax outflow which happen which is 0.4 so as a result of which what is my net sale proceeds 3 crores minus 0.4 crores i get 2.6 crores as my net proceeds from sale of this asset so as a result what happens the overall investment which i made initial investment is 5 crores against which i have an out i mean the receipts part from the old asset i get 2.6 so 5 minus 2.6 i get the net investment as 2.4 crores i hope it is clear so we have covered three scenarios scenario 1 where there is only initial investment only 5 crores you are going and investing that is one second is scenario 2 where in you are investing at the same time you have some sale from old assets so you will be taking 5 crores as my initial investment against that sale from old asset 3 crores so the net investment required 5 minus 3 2 which was scenario 2 now under scenario 3 what we did sale of old asset is there at the same time some there is some capital gain also involved so we derived again sale value what is my capital gain which i derived we worked out the capital gain tax we pay we reduce from sale value to derive net sale proceeds which being reduced from my initial investment so last example 5 minus 2.4 it become 2.6 becomes our net initial investment now the fourth scenario instead of capital gain there may be a situation capital loss arrives there may be a situation capital loss arrives what must be the possibility let's assume the scenario remains same initial investment is 5 crore itself your sale from old asset is 3 crores however in this case what happened net book value it become 5 crores earlier it was 2 crores in this case it become 5 crores so what is my capital gain or loss my sale value is 3 3 crores book value is 5 crores so the net becomes 3 minus 5 minus 2 which is my capital loss unlike earlier scenario which was capital gain here it become capital loss so as a result what happened whenever there is capital loss you don't have to pay any tax now there is a twist happens here let's take an another example assume that you were supposed to pay some tax capital gain tax 
for some other project, not for this project. Assume that you were pay, supposed to pay 100, you have a 100 crore capital gain available there, 100 crore capital gain. Now there is a tax attached to it. If there is a capital loss in some other project available, what you could do is capital loss can be offset against that capital gain. So whatever 100 crores capital gain, if there is a 60 crore capital loss available, I could set off that 100 crores minus the 60 and only the net portion I need to pay. As a result of which what happened? As a result of capital loss, my cash outflow towards exchequer, the tax payment gets reduced to that extent. So we could relate to that example and say that if I have a capital loss situation, then I have a tax saving in some other projects within the company. So it is an assumption permitted under capital budgeting. Even if it is not specified about any other project, you can assume that if there is a capital loss, which can be offset against some other projects capital gain. And as a result of which there will be a tax savings. So whenever there is a, whenever there is a capital loss coming into picture, what we will do is, we will be taking that into account and consider the tax savings portion. So the example which we were mentioning now, what we will do is, so the, let's go back to the example. It was sale value was three crores, net book value was five crores. So there was a capital loss of two crores derived. What we will do is two crore into 40% tax, assume that it was 40% tax, two crores into 40%, which is 40%, uh, it becomes 0 0.40 crore which is nothing but my tax savings reason being this could be offset against some other projects it becomes my tax savings now what happens my tax savings is nothing but it is instead of cash outflow cash savings it become as good as my cash inflow so what we do in that case so i already have a net sale proceeds of three crores and whatever we derive with this 0.4 tax savings we will add back so 3 plus 0.4 it become 3.4 so as a result what happened our initial investment is 5 crores what we decide and the net sale proceeds is 3.4 how it is 3 plus 0.4 tax saving 3.4 so 5 minus 3.4 the net initial investment becomes 1.6 crores i hope it's clear so we were discussing about zero year investment and its four scenarios so let's look at the flow once again we said initial uh, in investment decisions or capital budgeting under part two under that we said capital budgeting to three, three segments basic methods and miscellaneous areas under basics we have covered capital capital budgeting its significance long term short term everything covered then we moved on to methods under that we said net present value method irr payback period you know all these accounting rate of return you know all these things we mentioned then you have miscellaneous areas so now under different method we started with net present value method and under net present value method we said two golden rules you know the entire life cycle to be taken into account and then we discuss only about cash flows when it comes to npv now further deep further what we did net p npv entire life cycle we brought it into four segment is a drs zero year depreciation tax savings recurring cash flows and sale value under that what we did zero year we further break down see said zero year we have four scenarios coming in one is straight direct investment second is investment with sale value of old asset third is investment with sale of old asset with capital gain and the fourth one was with capital loss so we covered that four scenarios now the next is the d part depreciation tax savings so when we say depreciation tax saving this is important to understand okay earlier we said under npv method we will be considering only about cash flows so what is the place for depreciation which is a non-cash expense which is not a cash expense it's a non-cash expense important point here is though depreciation is a non-cash expense the result of depreciation inclusion of depreciation result in some cash savings let us illustrate that with an example let's take a very simple pnl so in that PNL, let's assume sale is 100 and you have expense of 50. 
So when you look at what is my net profit, 100 minus 50, 50 becomes my net profit. And we apply tax on it, 50 into 40%, tax is 40%. We get P and L, uh, uh, the tax portion as, uh, how much it is, uh, 50. Uh, 50 is my profit on which I apply 40. So I get 20 as my profit, okay? Now the next scenario, what I do? I consider one slight change in it, sale remain 100 expense remains 50 depreciation of 20 being added into that depreciation of 20 comes in as a result of which what happened my profit become 30 earlier it was 50 it become 30 and then i apply tax on it 30 into 40 percent how much it become my the next 30 into 40 percent when i do it i get a tax percentage tax of 12 comes into picture so as a result of it if you look at earlier case i was paying a tax of 20 which is 50 into 40 percent 20 now what happened because i added depreciation what happened it become 30 into 40 percent which would come 12 in effect ultimately there is a reduction of dollar eight with respect to tax so which is nothing but the tax saving occurred on account of depreciation that is what we call it as depreciation tax savings so though depreciation is a non-cash expense by applying depreciation we take get some tax benefit which is a cash saving that we need to take into account now the third scenario recurring cash flows so we discussed is that zero year we covered depreciation tax saving with that example is clear now the third one is recurring cash flows recurring cash flows is nothing but year on year so i have as we start the restaurant business there may be some cash inflow against that there is some cash outflow so which is nothing but <coughs> continuous cash inflows and cash outflow so we will be evaluating those cash inflows and cash outflow during this phase of course with net of taxes we will be elaborating on each of this as we progress but to, this is at a high level giving some summary so the third scenario is recurring cash flows wherein from year 1 to year 40 we will be taking into account the cash flows and cash outflow cash inflows and cash outflows now the fourth scenario sale value so we said zero year today's investment we covered then we said depreciation tax savings which is nothing but over a period of time depreciation is a tax saving out of it now the third is recurring cash flow from after zero year year one to year 40 we considered entire cash inflow now what is left in that project life cycle is your sale value at the end of project life at the end of project life what do you do at the end of project life whatever you are going to dispose of it the same scenario what we discussed earlier for sale of asset will come into picture sale of old asset will come into picture there may be a capital gain there may be a capital loss all these points we need to take into account when we consider the sale value at the end of projects life don't get confused with initial you know at the time of initial investment we said sale value of old asset but here we are discussing about it today whatever we invest at the end of 40th year when we dispose of it what should be the uh, you know cash inflows or cash outflow that is the point we are discussing so that point is called as sale value that is what our ZDRS so to summarize we discuss under capital budgeting under methods we have under uh, further again entire life cycle and entire life cycle we classified into ZDRS is it stands for zero year four scenarios coming in D stands for depreciation tax savings with that example it was clear recurring cash flow is nothing but year on year cash inflow cash flow flow that comes into picture and finally the sale value which have again capital gain capital loss all those will come into picture so now is it DRS is clear one more additional point you need to remember is working capital so let me uh, the, going back to the earlier example of restaurant see we were discussing about restaurant initial investment you know investment on the building everything we covered but to kick off the business to start the business you may require a fund a few funds maybe I'll, I'll, I'll a bit more elaborate on that so with that heavy investment you purchase building furniture everything is ready but maybe to start the business uh, like uh, you need to have the first day's food assume or the first week food you need to serve for that you don't need a heavy investment but you need some fund which we call it as working capital that is required how however once the working capital 
you know, bring, brought into the business, what happened? It ran in its own. You're bringing the working capital, it starts, and then the revenue comes, you know, that cycle moves on, and you don't need that fund anymore. It, it keeps running. So what we do is, at the end of, uh, sorry, at the beginning of the project, zero year, we bring this working capital, which is required. And also, as the project moves, maybe fifth year, I may have an additional working capital required for maybe some enhancement of business. So that may be required. And whatever, as I mentioned, this working capital we introduce, it will continue. And after a point, the business run in its own. The working capital need not require. As a result of which, what we do at the end of project's life, what we do, whatever we invested as working capital, we can take back those working capital. So initially or during the period, whatever working capital we invested, which become cash outflow for me, at the end of project's life, I will be able to take it back, which will become a cash inflow for me. I hope the point of working capital is clear. Now, the next is how we practically approach a question. So whenever in CMA topic, when that capital budget topic comes into picture, it is important to understand that you have a question of objective type wherein you may not be given a question to identify maybe the entire life cycle. It's a, it's a pretty big question where you have to, if you have to cover is the DRS completely. So on the other side, for objective questions, what generally the exams being asked specifically like, okay, first year, what is the cash flow? Second year, what must be the cash flow? Or zero year, what is the cash flow? Or at the project's end of project, what is the cash flow? So they will be specific on any of the particular period to derive the cash flow, which makes more sense because you objective type, you cannot do the complete NPV exercise. I hope you're with me. I hope that is clear. Now here, when we say NPV, first let me explain about the NPV part again at a macro level. We said the entire life cycle wherein is a DRS is involved in it. So we will take assume dollar 10, zero year. Then you have cash flows coming in year on year. Let's say to simplify it, let's say 10 years, 10 year project. So you have dollar 10 as your zero year investment and assume that year on year you have five dollar each as your cash inflow for next 10 years so it become 50 becomes your cash flow which is on on account of recurring cash flow so 50 is my cash inflow recurring cash flow zero year is 10 cash outflow depreciation tax saving assume it is another 20 dollars or uh, sorry another five dollars uh, or take it one dollar depreciation tax savings one dollar so what happened 50 becomes my recurring cash flows, 1 becomes my depreciation tax savings, and 5 becomes my cash outflow. Now, sale value, assume for a moment there is no sale value. So, what we do is we will take into account the overall summary wherein you have 50 as your cash inflow on account of recurring cash flow, R. Then you have depreciation tax savings 1 against cash inflow, 50 plus 1. Then you have cash outflow 5 against that. So 51 minus 5, 46 becomes my net present value. Present value, we have not come to that. But for this calculation purpose, NPV becomes 46 in this case. I hope that clear. So this is more at a very macro level, at a very high level with a simple example I was trying to say. But as we progress, we will go into deeper, 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 lot of things to understand. But at a nutshell, I can say that, is it DRS? We will take into account the consolidate all cash inflow. We will reduce all cash outflow and derive at our net cash flow position. That is what the net percent value method. When it comes to objective question, the entire NPV cannot be asked because it becomes very lengthy. So it will be specific for a particular project. You will be considering only for a specific particular, sorry, specifically for a particular period. So wherein what we do, we identify for a particular, let's say this is zero year. We will calculate under zero year what all will apply under is a drs or let's take year one year one cash flow so the first thing what you will do is you will write down is a drs so and then see okay is that when you are calculating year one cash flow whether zero year will apply no it will not apply why because it is relating to zero is it stands for zero year zero year it is not applicable for overall npv calculation it is applicable however if a question is on year one it is not applicable why because under 
year one calculation your zero year does not come into picture so you will write down ZDRS and then say is it not applicable when we calculate first year calculation depreciation tax saving yes if depreciation tax saving is depreciation is applicable tax saving is available then that will be available take then recurring cash flows yes year one there is a possibility of recurring cash flow available take then finally comes to sale value sale value may be at the end of project five years or 50 years so those cases when you are calculating year one that may not be applicable so you will again do not applicable cross it okay so when you calculate year one in this example it may be only depreciation tax savings and recurring cash flows may be applicable so you will calculate what is my cash inflow from recurring you will calculate from depreciation tax savings total it and that becomes your cash flow for that particular year one proposal i hope you get the way to approach the question two scenarios may come if it is a descriptive it may be a complete NB, npv question wherein the entire reset drs for the entire life cycle you will be taking into account when it comes to specific for a year which is likely for the objective type you will identify is it drs under which which all category I, applicable will take only that and calculate year one calculation or the respective period which is being asked now we will move on to specific questions wherein you will understand whatever theoretically explained so far will be more clear and will be able to appreciate how we need to approach towards questions and the questions being considered more or less in line with you know the previous exam models so questions has been considered so that you get a feel that okay these are the kind of questions which will be coming in exams